I'm Roland Phillips, author of The Spy Named Orphan, The Enigma of Donald McLean. We're standing outside Waterston's Piccadilly. I'm now going to take you on a walk that Donald McLean, of Donald McLean's last day in London, 25th of May 1951, 67 years ago, when he went, as he did most days in fact, from the Foreign Office to Soho for lunch, back, across, back to Pall Mall to his club and across St James's Park and back to his desk. No one he met on that day had any inkling that his defection was planned to the last moment and that nine hours later he would be leaving England for the last time. We're outside the Foreign Office in London where Donald McLean worked on his last day in London, 25th of May 1951, 67 years ago. Uh, it was also his 38th birthday and he left the Foreign Office at lunchtime to have his lunch with his old friend, Lady Mary Campbell, who'd picked him up when the year before he was, he'd come home from Cairo suffering from a terrible alcoholic breakdown and this was their celebratory lunch. He knew he was going to defect that evening but she commented how remarkably well he looked, his bow tie was jauntily tied. They met Cyril Connolly, an old friend in Soho, who last time he'd seen McLean, McLean had been passed out flat on his hall floor, meaning Connolly's guests had to step over him to get out. We've just walked across St James's Park, as McLean did most days uh, in, in his last period in London, working in the American Department of the Foreign Office. We know he walked across St James's Park and up the Duke of York steps to Pall Mall and his club, the Travellers Club, because by the last month in London, up to the 25th of May, he was being followed by MI5 watchers. One of the things about Donald McLean is he was very tall, he was six foot four. The watchers tended not to be, they uh, were recorded as being um, rather small men in raincoats and trilbies. And it was on these steps that one of McLean's fellow workers in the Foreign Office was rather surprised to see McLean taking the steps two at a time while this uh, watcher rather puffed behind him. He thought, wondered what on earth was going on. He didn't have long to wait to find out. The Travellers Club was Donald McLean's club in London, fittingly for a man who spent most of his working life abroad. And it was here that he came on, on, the, on his birthday, on his way back from lunch, he walked in here and cashed a cheque for £10. I've seen the cheque in the, in the uh, MI5 files and um, it's a mystery what it's for, whether to be seen uh, to be doing something normal of a Friday, getting some money for the weekend, whether he was leaving some money for Melinda, his wife, uh, to have after he'd gone. But anyway, he did stop off here. And it was next door at the Reform Club that he and Burgess made their plans for the defection. And uh, the watchers, who couldn't of course come into these gentlemen's clubs, noted that McLean always seemed very calm indeed when he came out, whereas Burgess seemed very agitated. So after a uh, period of years of uh, alcoholic agitation, he, now the die was cast, he seemed very calm and he so he left the Travellers Club about three o'clock after cashing his cheque, went back to work, did a very good afternoon's work, then said, you haven't forgotten I've got tomorrow off to his colleagues, and that was the last they saw of him. So here we are back at Waterston's Piccadilly. I hope that gives you some idea uh, of both of Maclean's last day in London and indeed of the content of my book, the spy who everyone knew by that time was a spy, acting icy calm, before the defection that rocked the establishment.